Hi guys, how are you today? My name is Bailey Sarian and today is Monday, which means cue jingle that I don't have yet. Murder, mystery, and makeup Monday. If you're new here, every Monday I do a video where I sit down, I put on my makeup, and I tell a true crime story. I would highly suggest you subscribe if you like makeup and also true crime. I upload every Monday and Saturday. So Saturday is like my normal tutorial or whatever day, and then Monday is the murder mystery makeup. FYI. So everything that I use on my face will be listed in the description box below. Anyways, so today's story is unsolved and it takes place on a cruise ship. I have never been on a cruise before. I don't really know why either. I don't know why I've never been on a cruise. I've honestly never been really on a vacation in my adult life. It's definitely something I need to work on. But after deep diving into these, like this cruise ship story and learning how many people go missing on a cruise ship, it actually makes me realize that maybe cruise ships aren't for me. Cruise ships just remind me of Gilligan's Island. A three hour tour. A three hour tour. I know they weren't on a cruise, but it's still like a boat on water. Same thing. So I was talking to Kate the Great here on YouTube. She does like makeup stuff, but also she's really funny and she understands sarcasm, which I greatly appreciate. I love somebody who just like speaks sarcasm. I wanna collab with her when she's out here. We were talking about cruises and then because my iPhone listens to me, listens to all of us, or like reads our texts or something, everything that was like recommended all of a sudden started to be about cruises. That's like a suspicious video in its own. Yeah, so then I got recommended like this story about Rebecca Coriam. And let me tell you, Rebecca Coriam, she was born March of 1987 in England. Um, she lived in Chester, England with her parents, her sister and her two foster brothers. She graduated from a Catholic high school and in her youth, she worked at the Chester Zoo. She joined the British Army in her teens and attended university where she studied sports science. She then spent four months teaching sports at Camp America in Maine. So in June 2010, she went to London to interview for the Disney Cruise positions along with hundreds of other people. I mean, everybody wanted to work for Disney Cruise. You would get to travel, you would have somewhere to stay, and you would get to make money. Goals. She ended up getting hired and went to the company's theme parks in Florida for training. After about four months on cruises to the Bahamas where the ships are registered, she went back to Britain for two months off. When she returned to work, it was on the Disney Wonder. And this one was based in the port of Los Angeles. It just seems like a, a fun job. I've never even been on a cruise, so what do I know? So during one of her work cruise trips, Sadly, her grandfather passed away and she ended up returning to Chester for two weeks. And sadly, that was the last time her family saw her. After the two weeks when she was visiting her family, she returned to the Wonder and her duties as a youth worker. She communicated with her family on Facebook or Skype and also on the phone as well. So she was always in communication with her family back at home. Six weeks later on the 21st of March, 2011, the ship pulled out of Los Angeles and she sent what would be her last message to her parents via Facebook saying she would call them the next day. So 12 hours end up going by, Rebecca hasn't called home yet. So it's not super concerning to the family, but at the same time it kind of is, cause it's like, okay, when she says she's gonna call, she calls. Like maybe just something's going on or we don't know, but like, it's just kind of weird. Where is she? I definitely can't do eyeliner and talk at the same time. Like this is very difficult. Please hold. At 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, that morning on The Wonder, so we're back at the ship, off the coast of Mexico, bound for Cabo San Lucas, Rebecca had missed the start of her shift. She was not in her room or anywhere else on the ship and did not respond to pages over the intercom. A review of the security camera footage found one appearance of her. It was at 5.45 a.m. Another crew member had said that she had gone overboard at 3 a.m., which was nearly three hours earlier than the timestamp of the footage. And the person who made this account like goes unnamed. So cool, like, Okay, but anyways, so in the security footage, Rebecca's talking on one of the ship's internal phones in the crew area, which is like, it almost looks like a, just a 
dark room with like no windows. In this video, she appears to be like really distraught. And it was also very strange because she also seemed to be wearing men's clothing or like clothing that wasn't hers because it seemed very baggy, just not like her clothes. This is what the parents said once they saw this footage later on, because if like you and I watched it, we probably wouldn't know. Now that they pointed it out, it, it did seem not her clothing. Also in this footage, you see Rebecca is on the phone and then a man approaches her and he asks her if everything is all right. And you can clearly see her mouth moving and she says, yeah, fine. And again, she's on the phone this whole time. So she's like, yeah, fine. And then she hangs up the phone. There's always a phone in my stories. That's not unusual. I take that back. That's not, okay. Anyways, so then she ends up hanging up the phone. She pulls her hair back and then she walks out of frame, putting her hands in the back of her pocket of her pockets, her jean pockets. And her parents say like it wasn't unusual. That was like her mannerisms. She didn't seem like she was intoxicated or like on drugs or anything like that because she wasn't stumbling around. So once it was reported that she was missing within the cruise ship, the crew searched the ship, but they found no sign of her. Supposedly they looked everywhere, found nothing. Also ships of the US Coast Guard and Mexican Navy, they searched the international waters because it was reported that maybe she had gone or she did go overboard at 3 a.m. So they searched the international waters, which the boat was at during the, the said times that Rebecca like supposedly jumped overboard. What I'm trying to get at is that they searched the waters, okay? Side note, can you like just go overboard on a cruise ship? Is that common? Do people just like accidentally fall overboard? overboard? And not just regarding this case, but I, I know I've like, heard other cases where people are just like went overboard and it's like, do you, is that a, how? Does the wind come? Again, this is coming from someone, I don't know. I've never been on a cruise ship, but I've seen Titanic. And when Jack and Rose are like on the edge of the boat, they didn't fly over. And then if you fall over, is it something where you die instantly or it's like you just fall into the water? I have a lot of questions and I need someone to answer them for me. Okay, anyway, so they search the waters and um, they don't find anything. Since the Wonder, this is the cruise line, is registered in the Bahamas, a detective from Royal Bahamas Police Force, he flew to the ship to begin a formal investigation once it returned to LA, which was three days after the disappearance. So, I mean, ugh, that's frustrating because in three days, so much can be hidden. I mean, and you're out, on the sea. So like, if you need to hide evidence, you just throw that shit out there. So three days after her disappearance, this guy flies in. So this detective was reported to have undertaken several days of onboard investigations. This detective was, he wasn't really like good at his job or like good at asking questions. He would just ask basic stuff like, have you seen Rebecca? No? Okay. He only asked about 10 people and then said he was done. So this guy wasn't really doing the best that he could to help out the family. Rebecca's parents were flown from England to meet the ship when it came into LA. They met the detective and the parents said that the detective told them he spent only one day on board investigating before he flew back. I appreciate his honesty, but I don't think that's how you do it. The parents claimed Disney kept them in a car with blacked out windows and brought them on board via a little used side entrance after all the passengers had disembarked. So the parents felt like they were really trying to keep this hush. They didn't wanna scare any of the passengers or even like bring it up to them because it might worry them. But they also feel like they didn't bring it up because it would just make the Disney Cruise Line look bad give him a bad reputation. The captain of the ship met with the parents and he gave his condolences and expressed his theory that Rebecca had been washed overboard by a wave while she was at the crew pool. Is this normal? Does this happen? Naturally, the parents doubted his theory because the crew pool had a very high wall around it. So you can't really just get like washed out. But after that, they were taken to a meeting with Disney executives and the woman Rebecca had been speaking to on the phone. I guess it was determined when Rebecca made that phone call because it was recorded, everything's recorded on the ship. She was speaking to a certain lady, but Disney wouldn't release like any of the footage of that or like the recorded call, they, they just wouldn't give that away. 
So the parents, when they met with Disney, they were told like, sorry, there were reports that she just flew overboard. Sorry about it. And then like, that was it. They weren't, they had their investigator come out from the Bahamas. He didn't find anything. So there's really nothing more to search. Like, sorry. But naturally these parents are fighters and they're like, no, something happened to our daughter and we're gonna get to the bottom of it. Honestly, like the thought of going up against Disney, bitch. You think they're gonna try and do everything they can for you? Think again, you know, it's ugh. So one year later, like to the exact day, one year later, Rebecca's father received an email from a woman who claimed she had seen Rebecca with a dark haired man on the street in Venice. The woman said she was quote, 85% sure it was her. Her father said it was just an email, but it definitely gave him hope. It made him feel like it was legit. But he, the father also had his doubts because how would Rebecca get out there? She didn't have her passport or any of her belongings. Her passport was retrieved when her family went to the cruise ship because they got to go into Rebecca's room and kind of gather her stuff and her belongings and stuff. And her passport was one of the items that was there left behind. So family kind of was given like maybe a little hope and, and a little light, but at the same time, I think when he sat back and thought about it, he's like, but how would she really get there? So the family is obviously pretty upset. They can't get answers. They're asking Disney, can they see the, the footage of the last time their daughter was seen? And they are not complying with that. The family reports that the Disney Cruise Line, a lot of their emails, their phone calls, everything would just kind of go unresponded to, nothing. So they, the family, went to a journalist and they wanted to get their story put out there. Since Disney's not gonna listen, they're just gonna put it out there and let everybody know what's going on. So a journalist, John Ronson, he took the Wonder, same boat, along the same route and made discreet inquiries while aboard. So he was low key investigating, doing his own investigation because that Bahama guy, he didn't do shit, you know? So he takes the boat undercover. I love that. I would be doing the same shit. And of course he had Rebecca's family, um, their approval to do this. Like he wasn't doing this behind their back. Several crew members, none of whom wanted their names used, who had been on the ship at the time of Rebecca's disappearance spoke to him. So these people had suggested that more was known about her fate than Disney or the police had publicly admitted. So one of the staff members that this journalist had spoken to, he said, well, at first he said it didn't happen, but then like under his breath, he told the journalist, you know, that's the answer I have to give you, which is really sad and unfortunate that they, these employees are too afraid to speak up and be honest. Like somebody's missing, somebody died. Don't you wanna help the family? I'm sure they'd get sued or something. I don't know. I'm sure Disney has like some crazy ass NDAs. But while walking around the ship itself, the journalist, he decided that Rebecca could have possibly slipped and fallen while jogging on deck four. And this was like a big jogging track. And I guess the bar for the jogging track, it wasn't like super high up. It was actually pretty low to where you could fall over. Rebecca was known for like working out, staying in shape. Upon further research, it was seen that, okay, on the jogging track itself, there were tons of security cameras. You couldn't see them like if, you were just looking around quickly because they were always kind of like hidden or disguised as something else. But there were cameras everywhere on this cruise ship. They have to have footage of something. If they're saying that Rebecca blew off the railing, then they have to have footage of that because there's cameras everywhere. So then this journalist goes and he talks to another deck worker and this deck worker told him that he was wrong. He was so wrong. She was not on the jogging track. This person said that Rebecca had actually gone overboard from the crew pool on deck five. Quote, I was on the ship that day. Everyone knows. This man cited a flip flop that was found in the area as proof. After the reporter returned, a woman who Rebecca's family had told to contact him, told him that the day after the disappearance, flowers were placed on the wall near the pool. Apparently, by the company. They had no idea why they were putting flowers there on the wall because nobody told them and nothing was really clear as to what was going on. 
But also, I feel like the crew members, like, they probably wouldn't be honest and be like, oh yeah, she was murdered while you're stuck on this boat. So towards the end of this trip, the reporter was told by another crew member that the night of Rebecca's disappearance, it was a really rough night. Like there was rough waters, big waves, big waves were coming. This crew member was saying she could have easily been tossed off of the ship, especially if the deck and walls were slippery. Since Rebecca was not found on the ship, despite a thorough investigation, investigators concluded that she went overboard, possibly the result of a big wave. Rebecca's family and their lawyer say they never received a copy of the final report as they were promised by the police. British detectives who did receive the report, they have refused repeated Freedom of Information Act requests for a copy on the grounds that it contains restricted personal information. Jesus. One of the crew members who said that they were close to Rebecca, they said that she was in a relationship and there were problems and it was really upsetting to her. It was a very intense relationship. It would be super good and Rebecca would be very happy and excited and everything. But when it was bad, it was really bad. And this crew member said that, you know, she wasn't doing well. And that's probably why she was walking around at 5.30, 6 a.m. by herself because she was probably just like really struggling with whatever was going on with her relationship. So it's just a bunch of hearsay is what I'm, this whole case is about. It's just a bunch of hearsay. So a couple of years later on the anniversary of Rebecca's disappearance, her parents told the Liverpool Echo that they heard the names of a young woman and an older man on the ship mentioned as possibly being involved in a love triangle with her and they called for them to come forward. They also disclosed that they had heard Disney had sent some additional footage to the FBI for enhancement but could not say what that footage might contain. Super suspicious. <sighs> I can't trust anyone. It's disappointing. Also in 2015, private investigators found records which show that the seas around the Wonder were normal that night. So remember earlier, it was said that the waters were rough. Well, the private investigators they pull up the reports and see that it was like perfect weather that night and there's no way that a big old wave could have came and swept Rebecca away. The private investigator also says that any wave capable of taking her off of the ship would have caused visible damage to it as well. So they're just lying. Then in 2017, somebody comes forward. Sorry, it's really hot in here. A lady named Tracy comes forward. Oh yeah, Tracy. And guess what? Tracy is Rebecca's girlfriend. Surprise, bitch. After a couple of years and decides to tell them what, like what she witnessed, what she saw. Tracy worked on board with her too. So they were together a lot. Tracy claims the night that Rebecca went missing, the two of them engaged in a threesome that night. And it was with this guy that Tracy was also seeing. So Tracy was dating another guy. She had told Rebecca about it like a couple weeks prior. Tracy had claimed that Rebecca had been really upset and distraught over Tracy and her, her boyfriend's relationship weeks prior. So Tracy was really honest with Rebecca and said like, oh, I'm interested in this guy. I wanna have a relationship with him, but I still wanna have a relationship with you as well. I'm just gonna date both of you. So it really affected Rebecca, according to Tracy. And the fact that Rebecca was going to have to share her girlfriend with somebody else really caused her to fall into a bit of a depression because this girl that she was madly in love with is seeing somebody else and like she felt like she was having to compete for Tracy's attention. That's just like if you and I were thinking about our partners or whoever just sleeping with somebody else in general, like that would just be very upsetting, but then having to be okay with it at the same time or like saying you're okay with it, but then it turns out you're not. Anyway, so Tracy was saying that Rebecca was very upset over this uh, because Rebecca would express to her that she wanted to get off the ship. She didn't want to be there anymore, how her mood like drastically changed. And then she had told Tracy that she wanted to jump off the ship because she was so depressed. And Tracy spoke out and said that she believed Rebecca climbed over the six foot railing of deck five to jump into the ocean. 
Sounds legit, Tracy. Sounds legit. Okay, so Tracy doesn't say like that she knew what happened. Just said this is what she thinks happened that night. But it is a little suspicious that they were having a threesome that night and that's the same night that she went missing. So I personally believe, obviously something went down that night between the maybe the three of them, the two of them. If there is footage of someone going overboard, why wouldn't they just show that just to prove that this is what happened. I mean, they don't have to publicly put it out there, but at least like to prove your case. And they never did. There's no way someone can go off a ship and not be recorded, especially on that ship because of how many freaking security cameras though there were. So to this day, nobody really knows what happened to Rebecca. Nobody has like really spoken up about it. Um, I mean, obviously a lot of people talked, but again, it was just kind of like a bunch of hearsay and they cannot get the cruise ship to hand over those tapes because they're fucking Disney. It's just like, it must be exhausting for the family to just be running in circles. And then Tracy comes out and is like, oh yeah, she like was depressed and like just jumped. Personally, I believe that Tracy and the guy that she was dating, they were a part of it 100%. And that's just my assumption. No, that is my opinion. I don't need to get sued. I apologize if this was kind of like all over the place, but like I tried, <laughs> I tried my best. There's so much like hearsay and what's real and what's not real. Where's Rebecca? Where'd they put her body? Does anybody know? It's flipping weird, right? I wonder if she got thrown overboard or if she was like on the ship for a while in a room because the rooms never got searched. Okay, it turns out like since 2000, there have been 313 people who have been reported missing from cruise ships. 313 people have been reported missing from cruise ships and only 10% of those cases have been resolved. Cruise lines are not legally required to make public every case of person who goes missing or overboard. So the reason that like things kind of get challenging as far as investigating cruise ships and whatnot is because you're on a boat, right? Or a ship, whatever. You're out in the water, okay? So technically, you're not on anyone's land, which means there's kind of a delay, like which country or which city or like who takes on this case and investigates it. So that's why investigator from the Bahamas came out to investigate because technically the boat was over there when she went missing or went overboard. So like Los Angeles, like LA police couldn't go onto the boat and do the investigation because technically she wasn't on their land or like in their area. When you're out on a cruise ship, shit gets cray. You're pretty much on your own when you're on a cruise ship is what I'm saying. Um, I was just kind of like, I went down this like rabbit hole of like people who went missing on a cruise ship and I was like, oh shit, everybody goes overboard. And they're like, oh, a big wave came. It's just so confusing and so sad because they never get found and the family never gets closure. So now what? Like, what do you do from there? But let me know what you think about this case down below. I think if I ever do go on a cruise, I'm just gonna be that bitch who has the life jacket on the entire time. So if I go overboard, I'm gonna be floating. I hope that you have a good day today. You make good choices. Please be safe out there, okay? I'll be seeing you guys very, very soon. Bye.